According to the police, Daisy had been drugged and then smothered or strangled. They questioned us for more than an hour and took samples of the tea that was left in our half-empty cup. Is this your Bible, too? Bible? Never saw it before. I... I don't think it was Daisy's. How do you know? Well, she wasn't much for baubles or flowers. Poor thing, they both are a great blessing. I don't know what I should do without my garden. Seems to be a well-grown moss rose. A moss rose? Why, I haven't seen one since I was a child. They don't mature well unless they have a very acid soil. I hope you haven't lost the place it was in, sir. Oh, good heavens, how careless of me. <laughs> but then I don't suppose it matters much. It might be very important, sir. It was on page 132, sir. How do you know? Well, I, I looked. Just before you came in. My mother always used to mark her place like that. Only she used a sprig of pennywort. When did you say you left the West Country? Oh, I didn't say, sir. But how could you tell that's where I'm from? Pennywort prefers to grow in the West Country. The moss rose is more capricious. One is apt to find it almost anywhere in England. Well, at least we can concentrate our search on England, eh, Evans? England is a pretty big place, sir. If we have to search all the gardens and all shires looking for moss roses... You wouldn't discover any. The moss rose is out of season now. Then where did this one come from? That is precisely what we must find out. Why would anybody want to murder Daisy Arrow? I kept asking myself over and over. And what had a moss rose pressed in the pages of a Bible to do with it? And what of the man I'd seen leaving Daisy's room? Somehow I had a feeling he was the same man I'd seen the night before in the cab at the theater. I had forgotten all about the cab and the white horse until then. Of course, in London, a white horse was no novelty. Yet there was always a chance it might be the one. Here you are. I kept it nice and hot for you, Harry. Ah, uh, almost thought I wasn't going to get here. When up popped a fair that brought me right to your door. Hello, young Bell. There's been a basin full of bother up your way, I hear. And you'll be hearing more. Is that your cab outside? If you wait till I finish this nice dish of tripe, I'll be glad to go out and have a look. The one with the white horse, is that yours? Will you call him White Bert? Well, being a friend of both parties, I wouldn't like to give an opinion. I don't care what you call him. You took a gent from here about an hour ago, didn't you? Who says so? A dark foreign-looking gent in a grey hat and a light raglan. I've carried dark foreign-looking gents in grey hats. I've carried dark foreign-looking gents in light raglans. But I don't remember as if I've carried one as wore both. No, my dear, not if you gave me a stack of Bibles that I to kiss, one on top of the other, and me a God-fearing man to boot. Where'd you take him? Oh. That gent. What gent? The one you took away from here. I don't remember saying I took anybody. Hey, Bert, me lad, how about another half point? Help yourself. I'm busy. Why no? Now, look here, mister. You tell me where you took that gent, and I'll buy you the half pint of bitter. I can buy me own, thank you. Now, look here. You take my advice and leave gents alone. They're not for the likes of you. You'll only borrow trouble, as you probably have already. The likes of me? Who do you think you're talking to? I knows a real gent when I sees one. And I knows you lasses that go fooling about where you don't belong. You keep your place and make them keep theirs. You'll be better off, mark my words. How do you know I'm no lady? Well, first place, you don't dress like one. Second place, you don't talk like one. Third place, you don't act like one. He's looking at you. I catches your eye. Where did you learn to say that? What? I catches your eye. Oh, um, my father always said it. Your father? Where did he drive a cab? He had a stand in Piccadilly. In Piccadilly? Why didn't you say so? What was his name? Pat Linton. Pat Linton? I never knew him, but I knew fellas are dead. Good friends of mine. He's dead now, eh? Paul asked, did that bloke in the cab do you wrong? That's my affair. Pat Linton's daughter. Well, I'll be blowed. Now, the gent in question gave me a nice tip. 
But if you're Bat Linton's daughter, he paid me off in Hyde Park. Hyde Park? But that's a big park. Hold on. I picked up a fare on the bounce. And on the way back here to eat this lovely dish of tripe, who should I see going into the Regency Hotel? Him? Big as life. Grey at and all. Thanks. I'll do as much for you sometime. I catches your eye. This way, my lady. Oh, there he is. Hello, Michael. Mother. What in the world? Are... Hello, Audrey. It's strange. I was just thinking of you. Where are you, darling? Extremely well. I have you had lunch? You haven't even said you're surprised to see us. Surprised as, as I told you to be thinking of someone who's far away, then suddenly look up and there she is. There's more to that than surprise. I thought you both were in the country. Did you just arrive? No, my dear. Last night we inquired for you, but you were out. Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't in. I, but uh, then I didn't know. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters except seeing you again. Isn't there a waiter in the whole of London? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. You'll leave with us tonight on the six o'clock train. I'm afraid I can't. Lady Margaret and I have got some shopping to do, but we could be ready by... I'm sorry, I can't go with you. Not tonight. But I want to leave as soon as I can. It'll be good to be back in the country again. We can take long walks on the moor, like we used to, darling. You and Mother leave tonight. I promise to join you, well, as soon as I can. At Daisy's funeral, there were only a few gelter. All through the ceremony, I kept thinking about the man in the light coat. I had a feeling he was somewhere near, watching us. <laughs> 